So I guess this is the end of vitamin D research. There is some research done called the Vital Study that involved 26,000 people, and they have found conclusively that vitamin D supplementation is basically worthless. So they don't want to waste any more money in doing research in vitamin D because this is the last nail in the coffin for vitamin D research. So I guess I can stop doing vitamin D videos since I have like over 100 right now. Probably just have to delete them. So let me share the quick summary of what the study found. Vitamin D supplementation did not reduce the risk of cancer, didn't reduce the risk of major cardiovascular events, stroke, or cardiovascular death. So this data I'm going to share with you came from a recommendation uh, from Dr. Bruce Hollis, who is the pioneer of vitamin D research. And he sent me a fascinating summary of this study and some of the holes in the study. In this study, they use the same trial protocols as they use in drugs. Let's say, for example, I'm going to study statin drugs, okay? And I'm going to take two groups. In one group, I'm going to give them the statin drug. And the other group, I'm not going to give them a statin. I'm going to give them a placebo. And then we're going to compare what this drug did, right? Now, normally, we don't have any statin drugs in our bloodstream naturally. And if you're taking the placebo, you're not going to get the statin. Vitamin D is a little bit different because we naturally get vitamin D from our diet, from the sun. So there was no baseline vitamin D tested during the study. They might have tested it, but they didn't give us the data. So why is that important to get a baseline? Well, let's say, for example, someone is deficient in vitamin D and they take vitamin D. They're going to probably see a result, right? versus someone else who has enough vitamin D, are they going to see more results if you give them vitamin D? Probably not, because they weren't deficient in vitamin D. Right off the bat, this study is, is pretty much null. It shouldn't even have been published. And not only that, everyone in the study, including the group who took the placebo, were permitted to take up to 800 IUs of vitamin D3 every single day. Day. Yes, even the placebo group. When you take more vitamin D, many times that extra that you don't really need is converted into an inactive form of vitamin D3. And then you also have the fact that this study measured the amount of vitamin D that was in the blood. Now, when they test the vitamin D in the blood, they're always testing the inactive form of vitamin D, kind of the reservoir of vitamin D. That inactive reservoir is mainly for the system of vitamin D that involves skeletal system, bones, and calcium. There's another system of vitamin D that involves the immune system that can help you prevent cancer, inflammation, diabetes, dementia, that does not involve vitamin D in the blood. To measure that, you're going to have to measure the active form in the cells. There are two different forms, and you're assuming that the Vitamin D in the blood is also acting in this other system, which is a huge error because it's not. You can have normal vitamin D in your blood and be virtually empty in the cells. And then we also have the subject of how much vitamin D was given in this study. And they even called it high amounts of vitamin D3, which is only 2,000 IUs. Now, 2,000 IUs might sound like a very large number, but it's only 50 micrograms, okay? 50 micrograms, not milligrams. That is not enough to affect the rest of the body. Any type of favorable research in vitamin D is not welcomed by the journals. Dr. Hollis also uh, mentioned to me that he was involved in a study called the VDAART, which talked about the prevention of asthma, which concluded that if you were to give a woman four 1,000 to 6,000 IUs of vitamin D3 in the first trimester of her pregnancy, you would very likely get rid of almost all cases of asthma. But you can't do it with 2,000 IUs of vitamin D3. It needs to be closer to four to 6,000. And in the Townsend letter, which I'm going to put down below, uh, there were six additional papers that Dr. Hollis mentioned. One that uh, showed that vitamin D decreases autoimmune disease by 22%. Another one shows that vitamin D can decrease the incidence of advanced cancer. Another one says that the more vitamin D in your blood, the lower risk of cancer rate and cancer mortality reduces autism. Another one talks about reducing asthma significantly. 
And then another one that he was involved with that decreased pregnancy adverse outcomes and the New England Journal of Medicine would not publish that article. But he eventually got into another uh, publication. So even though the vital study showed that vitamin D was worthless, there's plenty of other research that show that vitamin D can significantly decrease breast cancer, tooth decay, depression, skin disorders, especially psoriasis, prostate cancer, cardiovascular disease, high blood pressure, diabetes, and even colon cancer. This is also interesting. Women who completely avoid the sun have an increased risk of breast cancer by a thousand percent compared to women who get regular sun exposure. Sunbathing itself um, has shown to decrease blood pressure. Being out in the sun can increase serotonin by up to 80% just in one day without any side effects. So if you have not seen my interview with Dr. Hollis, I put it up right here. Check it out.